There it goes. Good morning and happy Saturday. So glad that you are here and there's so many people to welcome. I'm not sure who I should welcome first, but the reason that we're all here this morning is in wildfire. Who remembers them? Wildfire wanted to come back and visit with us and so in order for them to be able to come, they brought all their friends. <laughs> students from Camp Eden Academy this morning. They left early yesterday morning to drive all the way to be here, so this is a special privilege for us in Durango to have them come this far. So, uh, a big welcome. For the church members, um, I, I, don't, I need to welcome you, but I need to go beyond that because um, there's 85 people here and they all had a place to sleep last night. Yeah. Amen. And breakfast this morning and a meal last night. We only have two more to go. Thank you for all the church members who are making this happen. And now a welcome to all of those of you who came from 
Cortez and Farmington and Dolores and all of those of you who have kids that are supporting the academy. Glad that you're here as well this morning. A couple of announcements we would like to take care of of our church family. Uh, this might involve you as well. Does anybody know what this name number 12 to 19 Shoebox. has to do with kiddos? Shoebox. Shoebox week. Here at Durango, we try to have some from the church, some from the school. So just reminding you that if you've been thinking about doing Christmas shoebox, um, this next week is the national week to do that. Those of you who are interested in perhaps going all the way up to Denver, uh, how far is it to Denver? About seven hours? Probably like 30. Um, 30 hours, depending on the direction you go and how many times you stop and wait in between. Anyway, we're going on December 3. We will be going up to Denver and being involved in the Denver Distribution Center where we get to help um, pack and send out all of these boxes. So if you're interested in that, please let me know. Last thing for our members. Um, Two books that we have been talking about. I want to promote again. In fact, most of you from the corner of the state probably have already seen this. Um, it's been passed out um, to many of those churches and given to me to pass out to our church members. Um, if you haven't gotten one, please see me. We have several of those left, but this is the one that we just started sharing together this uh, last month, the God Shape. There are people that are enjoying this book enough that they've already asked as soon as possible, could we have a Sunday morning breakfast to uh, eat breakfast together and spend some time talking about the God Shape heart. So if you don't have one of those, uh, please let me know about that as well. Thursday. upside down for a lot of people that some of us know very well. So uh, Mary Rose and John and Jim would like to take a few minutes, and that's not part of our plan this morning, but when tragedies happen, sometimes we need to take a moment to remember those people and what they're going through. Um, we also have another challenge this morning. Randy's going to share that with me and pray with you as well. Um, we just thank the Lord this morning in our prayer session that Rebecca was doing so much better. And uh, Robert came this morning and we went back home to take care of her. So we're going to have a special prayer for her this morning as well. So let's hear about paradise. Good morning. I'm Mary Rose Force for the Camp Inn Kids. I'm Dean Force's mama. <laughs> anyway, I grew up in Paradise, California. And on Thursday, when that fire struck that town, 27th Avenue, I watched all of the things burn. This is our church. This is the Adventist Church in Paradise, where all three of us were baptized. And this is what it looks like now. Well, there's the inside. Oh. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and do the inside picture. That's how beautiful it is inside. Was, because now it looks like this. Left. And you know, we had an opportunity to help people in Africa, and I am really hoping that we can take an opportunity to help people in paradise. There's the church. The school lost its, its um, kindergarten to fourth grade classrooms. The hospital lost not everything. But the majority of those buildings are gone. It was a 60 bed hospital. The River Hospital, the Mary Hospital. I was there as a kid. We all went to the school. Um, my stepsisters, 
still live there in the block there with me. The pa former pastor of the Maxons um, lost everything. I probably have 50 friends in paradise that have lost everything. And um, there's one that's really close to home. I think his picture is going to come up here pretty quickly. A lot of the youth will notice him. He's now the pastor of the Seventh Adventist Church in Paradise. He's been there for three weeks. And you know how hard it is to move and get everything all settled and they're renting. And one thing they didn't do was get renters insurance. And they don't have a thing except their clothes on their back and their car. But they're safe. Everybody that I know, I haven't heard of anybody of in my family or friends that have gotten injured or died. But it's a tragic, tragic situation there. I'm going to let John tell about what it was like. John was born in paradise. I can't explain that. Hi, guys. Um, my name is John Clark. I yeah, was born in that Sutter River Hospital um, 1981. And I uh, grew up there, and like Mary Rose said, went to the school, went to the church, and was baptized there in sixth grade. And, you know, the school and the church kind of have special um, importance for me, especially since that's where I met Jen. Um, when she and I, uh, well, she remembers seeing me when I was in, when we were in sixth grade in Sabbath school there. <clears throat> and we went to high school together and graduated together. It's a small town, 27,000 people, but it actually feels like a very small town. You know, Durango is 17,000, but it feels like 100,000. But that truly is a small town. Uh, you don't go there unless you really want to be there. <laughs> There's nothing else out there. Um, and it's a small community that's very tight, tightly knit. Um, a lot of elderly, retired people, very big Adventist community up there since they have a hospital and an academy up there. Um, so, uh, yeah, we. I think there's an 800 membership there. So, um, yeah, they're in our thoughts and our prayers. And I was uh, telling Carolyn and Howard, what's crazy about Paradise is there's only two way down. There's two, one major road, and then there's kind of a little road going out. And you can imagine them just lined up trying to get out. Um, and I mean, there's not multiple, it's not a freeway, it's just a little two lane. One's a two-lane and one's a four-lane, and just and just imagine people died in their car. So uh, lift up the people of that town and community. And Jen's parents still live in the little town, right below, well, big town called Chico, which is right in the valley, right down the, from the hill. Um, and a lot of those pictures are from Jen's dad from their house. Just this huge thing. So. So. Um... I just wanted to lift them all up in prayer because it, it just made me um, really sad to see our church and a lot of my high school friends. We were texting each other and we were thinking of all our high school memories and seeing you know, all you guys like, what a good time! High school's the best. I love my junior year. year. And then to not have that anymore, I think part of our school is still standing, but it's just weird. It's the kind of part of you that you can't go back and show your kids. So. Um, and I was thinking of all John and a lot of Mary Rose's childhood is like just gone. So um, life is here and gone tomorrow, but um, let's rejoice and be glad because this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Our dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much that we can bow before your throne. Even in times of trial and in the middle of storms, we know that you stand there right with us. You tell us that in this world there will be trials, but to take heart, for you have overcome the world. So thank you, Jesus, that you have won the battle. You have won that battle over Satan. He is still sending all those arrows against us, um, temptation and everything, trials at us, burning homes, losing loved ones. But now, God, you reign, and I will proclaim that today in this house that is yours. And so I please uplift the family members, the friends of ours, the Pastor Steve, um, so many of our friends that have lost their families, I mean their homes. Um, we thank you that I haven't heard uh, 
of um, lives that were taken that as far as who we know, but we know there were lives that were lost, and we uplift those families to you. And we pray um, that there, those communities around them, like my hometown of Chico, just wraps them in their arms, and we from far away wrap them in prayers and uplift them to you, because we know there is something greater than what is here on this earth, just like Ezekiel is going to talk about today, heaven, and it's an eternal life with you, and of happiness, of no more pain, and no more sorrow. So we rejoice in that. We invite your holy presence into this place, because in your presence, there is fullness of joy. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. As the choir is setting up for our opening hymn, we're going to sing a very popular hymn in, a, in your hymnal, 327. It should be up on the screen as well. It's called Jesus Shall Reign Where'er the Sun. And uh, there's so many, so many trials, so many tribulations that we face, but it's a blessing, a blessing to know that God, God uh, is watching over us and that Jesus reigns with his victory on the cross. Let's sing together the hymn, Jesus, Jesus Shall Reign.
Those are the power events for Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for that. Your tragedy, through life's ups and downs, you uh, still reign. You have the victory. You have the victory, the complete victory, and it's ours to claim. We thank you for bringing us here safely to this place to worship you. Let us continue in bold hearts and uh, happy, happy, happy faces. And uh, bless us as we learn more about you today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 We're going to help well, we're gonna continue worshiping together as we uh, sing a few songs together. Um, words will be up on the screen. Hopefully they're familiar songs for you. Um, and uh, the strings are going to accompany and uh, we'll just have a little bit of fun singing to the Lord together this morning. We're going to start with the song Cornerstone.
lift her up to you, Father, and be with Robert as well as he is struggling to care for her. Lord, give him wisdom. Father, may she feel your, your touch and the comfort that only you can provide. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Oh 
Go get the chimes, yes. I'd like to continue worshiping with you with uh, a number. I love you, Lord. Um, we're actually going to maybe go in a little bit unannounced. Um, and uh, we'll just uh, hopefully you're blessed with the music I present. Uh, right here we have uh, the Tikhapanas uh, Gal Ensemble. It's our Gal Ensemble Gal Choir Camping Academy. Uh, you heard the orchestra as well as the chorale, Mount Eccles chorale, as we sang together, do the shower ring together. And um, I believe after the sermon end, you'll hear our. Uh, Our, uh, sorry, the other one called Koinonia. It's called a traveling choir. There you go, audition choir. That's the word I wanted. And uh, they're a smaller group, and uh, they have fun, lots of fun putting some more advanced uh, choir music together. Uh, Koinonia is a Greek word for community, and this group of students love to come together three days a week and work really hard uh, as a community of singers and also believers to uh, make music for the Lord. This is Take Upon Us, and they're going to play I Love You.
Good morning, happy Sabbath. Yes. We're very glad to be here with you guys. Um, from Camping Academy, this is, I think, the largest SWAT trip that has ever gone out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it was really, really cool, you know, to be able to have the, you know, big bus, and then I drove the short bus, and we had three other, three other vans, and then uh, my mom drove her vehicle as well. I mean, this is, we took the whole school pretty much, you know, just to be able to be with you guys and worship God with you guys. And um, <clears throat> the, my students were asking me yesterday, like, what are we going to do today? I was like, I don't know, don't worry about it, like, let's find something for you to do. So I think they went to, they had like fun stuff, like they went to museums, and I think some of them went to like a park, and some others did like some community service, so we did some cool school stuff, but it wasn't your typical day, because the entire school came out here. So we're very, very glad to be here with you guys. Uh, it's been a good school year at Camden. Uh, largest class, uh, freshman class in 20 years. Like Amen. 40, how, many, how many freshmen are there, guys? 42 freshmen. 42. I'm the sophomore class sponsor. How many sophomores do we have? 23. 23. You know what? We are mighty. We are strong and mighty. And uh, Lisa Kuzay and I are actually class sponsor for Missy and my wife as well. We're so glad to be able to be here with you guys. Uh, let's have a word of prayer before we, before we continue. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we're so grateful for you. We're so grateful, we're so grateful, Lord, for allowing us to come down here to this church in Durango, Lord, and worship you. And being in your house, Lord, it fills us. And may your Holy Spirit remain in our hearts, remain in our minds. I ask us of you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The sermon title this morning is In Heaven. And I, have, I don't know about you guys, I, I have a, I love country music. And, uh, it's uh, it's it's awesome. For, like, and I didn't used to listen to country music before. Like, I think I've shared some of this story with some of my students. I didn't I didn't listen to country music pretty much at all. And so I started dating my wife, and, and one day we were going on a date and stuff, and I was listening to uh, some music. I'm not gonna go into what it was, but I'm listening to some music, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, here's my wife, and she has horses and stuff. She's a cowboy. You know, she's country music. I'll put on some country music for her because obviously this music is not her taste. So I went and I put the country music on last night when I moved in, in uh, Dallas, Texas. Still remember the station? I don't know what the station is in Loveland. I usually just flip to the channel for 99.5 of Wolfen in Texas. And she was listening to it and stuff. I was like, all right, everything's good now. And it went on like that for a while. And then I told her one day, I was like, you know what? I never used to listen to country music. She's like, what? Like, I never listened to it. She's like, I never listened to it either. <laughs> You didn't listen to country music. You, know, you feel like country, but she's like, no, I used to listen to oldies. Oldies, so like, that's cool too. It was like, she's like, yeah, like, I didn't start listening to you, to it, she said, until I started dating you. I was like, well, I didn't start listening to it until I started dating you. And then, like, and listening to this, to the lyrics and stuff, to the country music and stuff, a lot of it just like, like, that's, that's powerful. A lot of these guys, you know, they write their songs and they just put in general with music and with Christian music. I don't know about you, but sometimes it just, it, it takes me back. You know, I'll be listening to a song, and it takes me back to, to a memory. You know, and like, I found like a really cool guy, I don't know, it's like a 90 station that they have in London. And like, Sugar Ray came out, I was like, oh, yes, I remember that. I was like, I was a sophomore in high school when this song came out, I was like, that's so cool. And all of these songs were coming out and stuff, and like, they had created stuff, I was like, wow. I remember, this is the thing, I remember what I was doing the first time I listened to that song. Do you guys ever have that? Like you hear a song, kind of. I, I do, and I'm like, that's a song. Like I was walking on this street, or I was doing that. It's, it's just, it's interesting how, how our memories do that. And then there are some songs, you know, so th those songs I'm talking about, they always, they take you back. They take you back. The songs that I'm gonna mention today, I hope that they take us forward. So here, this is the song by um, by Brad Paisley. Brad Paisley, he's talking about where I'm get, when I get where I'm going. This is how he starts the song. When I get where I'm going, on the far side of the sky, the first thing I'm gonna do is spread my wings and fly. I'm gonna land beside the, beside the lion and run my fingers through his mane. I might find out what it's like to ride a drop of rain. And then he continues to go on, and then towards towards uh, towards the end of the song, it says. I'm gonna walk with my granddaddy, and he'll match me step for step. And I'll tell him how much I missed him every minute since he's left. And then I'll hug his neck. 
It's obvious that this song, he's talking about heaven. He's talking about what he's going to do when he gets to heaven. It's just, it's interesting, you know, I, I don't understand these guys when they write these songs, how creative they are. Talking about riding on a drop of rain, I never even, that concept never popped into my mind, but in, in heaven, will that be possible? What will heaven be like? Here's another one by, uh, I can't remember what this guy's name. I think it's Jason Morgan. Oh, it's me. <laughs> and he says, every day I drive to work across Flint River Bridge. A hundred yards from the spot where me and Grandpa put it. There's a place of his old fruit stand on the side of the sawmill road. Old sawmill road. He'd be there peeling peaches if I was 20 years old. It, it, as if it was 20 years ago. What, wouldn't, what I wouldn't give to ride around in that old truck. It says if heaven wasn't so far away, I'd pack up the kids and go for a day. Introduce them to their grandpa. Watch them laugh at the way he talked. So that was awesome. He's talking about heaven and what it's going to be like. What is heaven going to be like? You know, so many times in this world, it's just, this world is just so filled with catastrophes. And my students know that I love Texas. They, I, I love Texas. I love the, the freedom that we, what, that we had out in East Texas, just being able to be so far in the wide open and the, 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 the traffic jam is literally a tractor going down the road and taking the full flames. That was the air traffic jam. I'm loving Colorado. I love this weather. I love the snow. I love this. I love bad weather. I welcome the bad weather for some reason. I don't know what it is. I just love the snow and I love the storms and all that stuff. I don't like it when it's cold and there's no snow. I don't like that. I'm ready for it to be some snow. You know, to me, it's, just, it's a waste of time. It's a waste of weather when it's freezing cold and there's no snow. And it's, you know, a beautiful starter, you know, starry day or whatever, starry night, or it's all sunny and it's freezing. Don't like that. Don't like that. You know, in heaven, we look at this world, and I, I'm thinking of everything that, that's going on in California, I'm thinking of all the things that are going on around the world, I'm thinking of all the things that I know of my students as a chapter, and the struggles that they face, I think of the staff and the struggles that they face. I think of my own life and the struggles that I face as a man. The struggles that I face as a father, the struggles as a, that I face as a pastor. I think about our church in general, the Seventh Day Adventist Church, and the struggles that we're going through right now. And I'm asking myself, why are we still here? Why in the world do we still want to be here? As much as we may love this place in Colorado, how beautiful it is, and just the beautiful mountains. I told my wife about Fair Play, and I told her about coming over Wolf Creek Pass, and I told her about Franco. And I said, that is some of the most beautiful places that I've ever seen in my life. Coming over, uh, what is it, uh, Poncha Pass, and then you come down and you come over to where it's like off land. <laughs> you all know what I'm talking about? It's like, oh, how beautiful. No, 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 it's not, not anymore. And you come down and it's all flat, but then as you're coming out towards Orego, and you see that massive, massive wall of mountains with the snow-covered peaks. How amazing is that? How beautiful is that? And the thing is this, we make this place our home, we make this place our home, but when we actually look at it, do we actually want to remain here any longer? My dad has cancer. And it is only through prayer that my dad has been alive for this long. My mom was rejoicing that he had gained five pounds. He was down to 115, now he's 119, 120, 120 pounds. Why do we want to continue to live this way? You know, it's, it's, I don't know what it is. I don't know if there's no snows in Colorado. I don't smell them as much as we did down in East Texas. I don't want to talk about the roadkill. In heaven, in heaven there's not going to be any roadkill. In heaven there's not going to be any popular. In heaven, candy won't rot your teeth. Praise the Lord for that. I love my Kit Kats. I love my almond joys and it's not going to rot your teeth. I don't think he's out of the pair of them. In heaven you won't need glasses. I need them very much. But I'm really frustrated at these things because they're like all scraped up. But I'm too cheap to buy new ones. So I continue to struggle. In heaven, I'll be beautiful sorry. In heaven, in heaven, you won't have cancer. In heaven, you won't have wildfires. In heaven, we won't have orphan homes. In heaven, we won't have ERs. In heaven, we won't need committees. In heaven, we won't be able to wonder what God is like. In heaven, we will sing with the angels. In heaven, it will be eternal worship and praise. Father for Jesus and his son. That's what I'm looking for. 
want to invite you to open your Bibles to the book of Revelation, in Revelation chapter 21. And this is this is John. He, he's looking at what he's looking at the window of time, and he's looking forward. He's looking at what the people of God will be going through. That's <laughs> I love the book of Revelation. And a lot of times, unfortunately, we do we don't do it justice. I love the book of Revelation because it's pointing out God's people in the last days, but it's pointing out that God's people in the last days will not be by themselves. That God the Father, that Jesus Christ, that the Trinity will be working on the behalf of the salvation for God's people in the last days. It goes to show us in the book of Revelation that we will never be alone as God's people. That God will always be with us. So you can just imagine the, the drama, the, the PTSD that John must have had after all these, these horrible things that he's seen about God people being uh, you know, persecuted and all the things that are going to happen in the last days and how this world is just going to almost implode. And as he's going through all of these things, as he's, he's probably has heartbreak. Can you imagine? You know, so I can't remember what, how the conversation was or where I even was, but I remember this conversation that I was having and somebody asked, would you want to know how you died? They, they were like, no, I wouldn't. I was like, I would. Do I really want to know how you died? I was like, yeah, because I would avoid that situation by all means necessary. By all means necessary. If I know that I'm going to die in a car crash, guess what? I'm going to walk wherever I go. I'm not going to do it anymore. You know? If I find out that I'm going to be at a baseball game for some crazy reason, and the baseball hits my head at a baseball game, guess what? I'm not going to do I'm not going to go watch a baseball game. That's why I want to know. Because there are some things that I, don't, I can't handle. I, I hate it. I don't know about you guys, but I hate it when somebody's like, I actually think this audience is really, really important. Oh, but I can't tell you right now. And they walk away, I can't stand it. You can tell me right now, don't you dare walk away from me. I can't stand it. I can't wait in anticipation. But at the same time, there are some things that I don't want to know. I don't know if I can handle the same things that John was able to see. I don't know if I can handle that heartbreak of God's people being persecuted, of God's people living in last days and seeing how Satan is trying to overcome them, but he can't. I pray the Lord. I don't know if I can handle it. But at the very end, when you look at the scripture, when you look at the entire book of Revelation, you see what God is going to do for us. This is it. John gets to the very end, and I don't know what John was thinking to himself. He's probably thinking to himself and hoping and praying, Lord, when is all this going to end? When is all of this going to stop? And then he gets to the third part, Revelation chapter 21. And this is how it reads. Before we read, let's take a moment for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, bless your word. Lord, may these words that are so beautiful become ingrained in our brain. May they be in our hearts. Give us hope. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. It says, Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also there was no more sea. Then I, John, <laughs> makes it clear, I, John, I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride and born for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. That's so beautiful. John, as he's writing these things, he talks about a new heaven and a new earth. And it reminds me of these, these TV shows that they used to have, you know, a few years ago, where they would pretend to steal the father's car. You know, and they had a history, like, yeah, this was his first car. You know, this was given to him from his, from his dad and stuff, and it always has some sort of sad story. And they, they play a trick on the father, and like, yeah, your car was stolen. And the guy's all super heartbroken. And then they go and restore that car and leave it like you. And they bring that car back, and it was, it was always so exciting. This father would see his car and it was parked in his garage and it's perfect. It is in mint condition, there's nothing wrong with the car. And the father just breaks down crying. Kind of like the whole thing with Fix Rubber as well, you know, where they buy this house and it's always, again, it's also a sad story. It's like a couple with like 10 kids and they live in like a small house and they're like, yeah, we bought this house with a plan to, to fix it. And then they like show the, 
like the old house, what it was like. And they're like, this is your new house. And they open it, it is perfect. And the parents are just with their, like, their eyes are so big and they always start crying because it's such an emotional time because everything is new. Everything is perfect. That's what this is saying. This is that John sees the new Jerusalem and he sees a new heaven and a new earth and everything is perfect because God has recreated it. And for some crazy reason, I have this picture in my mind standing or sitting, not really, that's what I'm doing, I'm sitting on the, the walls of the new Jerusalem and it comes down. All of evil, all of all the death, all the pain has been, is done away with, it's wiped clean, it's, it's no more. And I'm literally sitting, I'm going to be <laughs> sitting on the palace walls and I'm going to hear God speak things into creation. Can you imagine? Boom, new trees. I hate what I'm talking over there. I don't know, just a random spot. Let's put one tree on Mount Everest. I'm going to ask him for that. <laughs> just a random, random thing. To be able to be there with God. To be able to see him recreate a new heaven and a new earth where there is no more death. Where nothing of this current life is. Amen. When it says that, it describes it as a bride. And what a perfect description. How many of you guys remember your wedding day? Y'all remember? Were you on time? A little bit. Almost like how how all day you were. An hour? Okay, wow. <laughs> okay. My wife was an hour and a half late. So, <laughs> so my wife was an hour and a half late. And I'm standing there. And I know she's coming because I know she loves me. And I'm just going to stand in there, you know, turn my thoughts. And then there's some, some people that are looking at me like, poor guy, he doesn't know. <laughs> Look at him. He looks so hopeful. What a fool. And then, the, like, her friends are like, I know she's late. I was like, oh, yeah, I know. I know, Anna. She's late for everything. You know, and then she finally drove up. She rode on this chariot with her dad. And it was being pulled by these two huge horses. I can't remember what the horses looked like because the horses weren't important. But what was important was the, was the, the people that it had. And I remember, and I'm standing there, May 21st, 2006, and watching her come to me where we will be joining our lives today. She was beautiful. Everything was absolutely perfect. And that is the best description that John can, John can give. He says, she, the new Jerusalem is coming down like a bride. In perfection, in purity, coming down to this earth. That's what heaven is going to be like. But to me, one of the most beautiful parts, and it says that it says that the tabernacle of God will be with men. When we go to the book of Exodus, if I'm not mistaken, it's Exodus chapter 25. Please forgive me if I misquote it, but it says that God tells Moses, Moses, build me a sanctuary right smack dab in the middle of my people. God is saying to Moses, I want to be with my people. Now remember, this command is given to Moses while the people are complaining about God. Remember, every single time something was going to happen, remember when they were at the Red Sea? And the Israelites are like, hey Moses, why didn't you bring us out here? So we could die out here where there are not enough graves in, in, in Egypt? Constantly. Hey Moses, why didn't you bring us out here? At least we had pots of food in, our, in, in Egypt. They were such liars. They were starving to death. They were slaves. And God still says, I want to be with my people. And here, it says, and behold, I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. That is everything that God has ever wanted. God has always wanted to be with his people. That is what it's going to be like in heaven. In heaven, we will be in the presence of God. You guys know that song I can only imagine? It's running through your head right now, huh? So what am I going to do when I'm in the presence of God? Am I going to sing to Him? Am I going to sing praises to Him? Or am I going to be so excited being in the presence of God that all I can do is just stand there in awe? What is it going to be like in heaven? You know, put this, 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 this scripture in my mind. A few weeks ago, we were, we were concluding uh, the Love Reality Tour. Pastor Jonathan Leonardo came out to do the Love Reality Tour uh, there in Canton. And he talked about heaven on the Sabbath, the last day. He talked about heaven. 
And I knew where he was going, Jonathan and I go way back to, to when we were in Southwestern. We both went to college together and stuff. We uh, ran into each other's seminary and stuff. And now we're both working in ministry. And we were talking about life and stuff. And, and uh, he found my, I had, a, I had a, uh, an old hat that was a, belonged to a friend of mine. It's a Stetson. It was an open road hat. So it's the same hat that Lyndon Johnson wore. But he loved that hat. Jonathan Leonardo loved that hat. So he put that on when he was in my truck. And he wouldn't try to have an accent. But he's from Massachusetts. So the Massachusetts accent isn't as nice as the Texas accent. <laughs> and he slaughtered the, the slang. It just didn't come out loud. You know what I'm talking about? You know? So he would always try to imitate me. And while he's talking about heaven, he's, I knew what he was going to say. He's like, yeah, and I'm going to be out in a ranch with some cows. And I, I knew what he was going to say. He says, hanging out with the sisters. And I was like, wow. Like, I had never, he put that picture in my mind. And I'm literally leaning over a horse in this picture, leaning over this horse, and he's wearing my hat for some reason in my head. He's wearing that hat. And we're talking about God. And what he has done for us. But as he's talking about this, as he's talking about what it's going to be like in heaven, what we will be doing in heaven, this is that somebody's going to question about who the man is on the throne of God. And that the angels can't speak it because it's not theirs to speak about. That we as humans would have the privilege to be able to witness about who Jesus Christ is and why he is in the form of, of, of man. It says that the angels will call him and I and he will tell me. This is literally what he said. He says, it's the key. It's time for us to go and tell somebody else about who Jesus Christ is and how he saved us. In heaven, we're going to have gardens for some reason. For some reason, I had this picture, and it was such a nice picture. It was such a nice picture. I'm literally lying on a hammock. I'm doing all kinds of stuff in heaven. And it's okay, because we have an eternity. We can do all kinds of stuff, and it's always going to be fun. So I'm in a hammock, hanging from two palm trees, and it's white sandy beaches, and it's, it's nice. You know, and it's, 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 the water's crystal clear, and I have coconut milk. Just drinking it, and it's so perfect. And I'm just lying there on the hammock so much fun. And a lot of times people think, oh man, when I get to heaven, we're not going to do anything. We're just going to sit around in a cloud and play around. I said, we're just going to do that for the rest of eternity. I know, man, that sounds so boring. <laughs> I need to be doing stuff. My brain is always going. And my wife is going to love this scripture. In, in the book of Isaiah, I mean, let's look that up. In Isaiah chapter 65, verse 21. I hate to burst it to, the, to my uh, students. Isaiah chapter 65, verse 21. Kind of probably knows the scripture. Isaiah chapter 65, verse 21. This is, this is Isaiah, and he's prophesying about what it's going to be like when they come back, but also talking about heaven. All right, and we discussed this a little bit in, in Sabbath school. It says, They shall build houses and inhabit them. It's talking about the citizens coming back. To, to Israel, but it's also a glimpse of what it's going to be like in heaven. We will build houses and inhabit them. It says, they shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. So a lot of times we have this idea that heaven, in heaven we're just going to be on vacation the entire time and, I don't know, like play with lions and then that's it. That's not what this is saying. I hate to break it to us, but in heaven we're actually going to be doing stuff. We're going to be working. We're going to be building houses, guys. How many of you guys like mission trips? You guys know how hard it is to build mixing concrete and stuff? I imagine that in heaven it's not going to be as hard because, you know, we're going to have perfect bodies and we won't get worn out. But it says that we'll also have gardens. The reason that it's so important for us to understand this is because here on earth, it, says, it talks about a home. It says we build homes here and they don't last. I was sharing with Jenna, our house in Texas burned. And to us, it was such a perfect house. And we had spent so much time and saved our money to do stuff because it was our fixer-upper. They had wood paneling. How many of you guys remember the wood paneling? Okay, so our wood paneling was nicer because it was from the 90s. So it wasn't the stuff that we grew up with from the 80s, you know, the really ugly stuff. This looked a little cleaner, but it was still wood paneling. So we had painted it in, in, in some hope to try to, you know, make it look a little bit nicer and stuff. And we had concrete floors because the guy had had carpet before. 
Okay, so we were one like, we're gonna put the tile down, and it's gonna look really, really nice, and we're gonna remodel this house, it's gonna be perfect. We were finally able to get it to that point of perfection where we were like, wow, it's beautiful. Literally, literally, two days before we moved out here to Colorado. We had been working on it so, so hard, and painting and, 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 and texturing and everything, trying to get it absolutely perfect. We finally got it perfect. And while we're doing all this remodeling and stuff, I'm packing, I'm packing everything. We're loading stuff into, a, into, a, into, a, into the semi. Finally, two days before we move out here, that's when it was perfect. Super Bowl night, a couple years ago, it burned down. All of that hard work. My friend called me, and the story's kind of funny, but we're not going to go into it right now. We can laugh about it now because nobody was hurt. And it's just kind of crazy how it all happened. He calls me up at 1 30 in the morning and he's crying. He's a friend of mine. He's like, Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm like, I'm, I'm, In my mind, I'm, I'm asleep still. I'm like, what you, what, What's going on? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, dude. I'm like, What's going on, dude? He's like, Your house is on fire. I was like, well, Go put it out. <laughs> I left a hole there. Just spray it. Like, Come on, what you, don't call me. Get off the phone and go put it out. He's like, I can't. I was like, How bad is it? It's too. It's, it's all over. I was like, what do you mean it's all over? And he's crying, and I'm over freaking out. And then by this time, Anna has woken up. And she's crying. And I'm like, well, how bad is it, dude? He's like, I don't know. I was like, well, go look. I'm like, okay, so he goes and looks. He's like, oh, man, it's bad. I'm like, how bad is it? He's like, the roof is caving in. I'm like, ah, it's all over. <laughs> it's done. And we sat there at 2.30 in the morning. Just shocked. I kept, like, I kept... This happens to other people. This can't happen to us. But I praise the Lord that we have a new house. Praise the Lord that in heaven, <clears throat> there will no longer be goodbyes with family members who are dying of cancer or the disease. I praise the Lord because in heaven, we will all grow old, whatever old will look like. We, will, we won't have gray hair. We won't have the loss of hearing. We won't have the loss of eyesight. In heaven, our joints aren't going to hurt. In heaven, we will be together with God forever. In heaven, things will be perfect because we will be in the presence of God. And we will praise Him for giving up His one and only God, begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to come and die for us so that we could have eternal life and be with Him forever. In heaven, we will no longer have to say goodbye. Let me read to you guys in John chapter 14, if you guys know it. John chapter 14, verse 1 through 4. This is one of my favorite passages. Jesus is about to leave his disciples, and he's telling them that he's going to leave, and they're so heartbroken. They're, they're like, Jesus, what are you talking about? Where are you going to go? He says, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may also be. And where I go, you know, and the way, you know. Brothers and sisters, remember, this world has troubles. This world is not your home. This world is not my home. As beautiful as it may be here in Colorado, as beautiful as our homes may be, as awesome as our cars may be, this, this is not our home. If you're going through a hard time or you have a loved one who's going through something difficult, if, you, if you're going through something difficult in your marriage, if you're going through something difficult with your children, if your life is difficult right now, remember, this is not your home. God has a place for you. He has a place for you. Picture yourself there because that is where He wants you. It's money in the bank. If you give your life to Jesus Christ, it's money in the bank. He will come back for you. He's coming back for me. And our job our job as God-fearing people, our job as citizens of heaven, as sons and daughters of heaven, is to take as many people as we possibly can with us. We want to be able to fill that city. If Jesus, if we're so full, and this is going to be awesome, if we're so full that we can't grow to the side, God will build it up. It will be the tallest city ever. But God will take us all with him if we allow him. In heaven, we will be together, worshiping the Father forever. Amen. And thanking Him for His goodness, for rescuing us from this wretched, wretched mess of the world. Let's pray. 
You know, Father, we're so grateful. Lord, because it is through Jesus who came, who left the glory of heaven, who left his throne to become a simple man like us. There was nothing attractive to him. There was nothing beautiful about him. He was just a common man. He didn't even become the son of a king. The son of a carpenter born in a major Lord, to a young teenage mother. Lord, it is through him, through his life, through his testimony that we got to see who you are as our Father. And it's because he laid down his life, because he resurrected, and he's coming back for us again. That we live for you today. Lord, transform our lives. Lord, may we continue to hold this banner high. May we understand and remember that this world has nothing over us. But we live for Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ lives in us again. May we hold that banner and take, Lord, as many people as we possibly can here and with us. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you so much, Pastor Zacchaeus, for that beautiful message. Um, that only took 10 minutes, 10 minutes, because that's what he promised he was going to do. So we're so excited. Oh, wait, Hispanic minutes. Forgot about that. Uh, <laughs> So what we're gonna do is um, we're, we're gonna sing a couple songs for you. Right, you're gonna sing, and uh, I'd like to personally invite you. We're gonna do another concert after the Vespers concert at the Pagosa Springs SCA Church. It starts at 6 p.m. and there's gonna be even more music. So if you like the music, you're personally invited. We're gonna be there by three, hopefully, and we're gonna do a little short hike. You can come hiking with us. Some people are gonna do it in their tuxes because they forgot. You know, change of clothes. They're gonna be fine. They're gonna be okay. Um, but I want to thank Pastor Zacchaeus for that beautiful picture of what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be doing this the whole time. We'll just invite each other. And be like, hey, let's sing. Hey, let's play this instrument. Let's hang out together. Um, Connie is gonna sing uh, two numbers. I surrender all and rock and roll.
Amen. Lord, we know that we can look forward to a day when we won't have any more of this pain that we we know so well. Um, Lord, and we thank you for the hope and for the blessings uh, that you have given us as we wait for your return. And Lord, we pray that we would feel your presence in our hearts as we go today, as we fellowship together, Lord, as we um, share our music, as we continue this afternoon as well, Lord, that we, you would keep us safe. You would keep us uh, in your care as we remain uh, this week. We love you and we thank you in your name. Amen. Please be seated for the post. Way out. We did get that up an offering this morning, and it goes for the long button as our offering. No way does, but if you enjoy these young people and their sharing as much as I did, it costs a lot of money to drive all those vehicles down and all the way back again. So if you feel so impressed and would like to put a little offering in the offering on the way out, we would love to support the school and their students to be able to Oh, yes. And would you please come join us and meet the kids because we'll be eating together and meeting the family in the fellowship. I'll be all welcome. Thank you. 